Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, as always, on behalf of Alice, myself, and Mark, we want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hi. As we continue on in our study of Paul's second letter to Timothy, which I hope we're actually going to conclude today. We'll see. Well, we shall see. Lord, Lord willing. Amen. Okay, so we're, we're going to go on and continue on that. This will be our 20th part of the study. Uh, we started the study actually in 1 Timothy. Mm -hmm. We've been studying 1 and 2 Timothy, gosh, about nine, ten months ago. Wow. So there's a lot of meat in here. We're going to start and get right back into this and pick up where we left off in the fourth chapter of 2 Timothy. But first, Mark's going to ask for God's blessing on our time. Oh God, we just thank you for the word and we thankful and we're thankful that we can come and study it with you. Yes, uh, just be here. I, we know that you are, but open up our minds, our hearts and our ears to hear your word and let us see how to apply it out in the world. Thank you very much and amen. Amen. Give us understanding, Lord. Okay. Last week we left off talking about Paul had said to Timothy, I solemnly charge you. And then in verses 3 and 4 he said, For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. He's talking about people in general. He's talking about the church. Right. They're not going to endure sound doctrine. I shouldn't say the church. People Religious, who call themselves yeah. Christians. Okay. The, the fact is, and you know, I, I taught on this this past Sunday here at our fellowship. Who is the church? Well, the, the question is not who is the church, because the church is the family of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the church is. Right. It's not a denomination. It's not a corporation. It's not an organization. It's the family of God. Mm -hmm. That was always the intention of, of God. Those who are his sons and daughters. Those who are connected to Jesus Christ as our big brother. And the fact is, you know, somebody came and said to Jesus, your, your mother and brothers are outside. He said, who are my mother and brothers? Mm -hmm. And he said, those who do the will of my father, they are my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know who the church is, it's very simply those who do the will of the father. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. It's not about going to church. It's not about doing religious stuff. It's about doing the will of the father. So you have to get fixed on that, right? And so many people that call themselves Christians, many people that participate in mm -hmm. quote unquote in church, those are the ones who are not going to endure sound doctrine because that's hard, right? And we covered that pretty well last week, so I'm not going to go over it all again. But you have to understand, he's talking about this because in 4 5, which is where we're going to start, he says, But you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So Paul is saying to Timothy, the majority of people, they're not going to pay attention to the Word of God. But you, because this is a personal letter to mm -hmm. Timothy. He said, mm -hmm. I want you to be sober in all things. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist to fulfill your ministry. Be sober in all things. Now, the King James says, be watchful in all things. But interestingly, more often than not, in the New Testament, the word that's used here in the Greek, the King James translates as be sober. Because that's literally what it means. Mm -hmm. Uh, the opposite of being sober is to be drunk, to be intoxicated. So somebody who's not sober, somebody who is intoxicated, is not given to careful thinking, not giving proper thought to the consequences of their actions, right? That's why, you know, you don't want to see, be around people who are drinking and driving because they're not conscious of the consequences of their action, right? Do, would this also mean to be sober would be like an attitude to be, um, it's, you're taking this very serious. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, take this literally for what it says. Okay. A drunk person doesn't take anything seriously. No, no, they don't. Or, you know, they're, they're just not, they don't function mentally right. right. Okay? Yeah, right. That's, that's what he's talking about here. He's saying, he means what he says here, right? Be sober. Don't, don't act like a drunk person, all right? Okay. Jesus said, whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. 
For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? You've got to consider the consequences of your actions. There's a cost to everything that you do. And he sent out the twelve to proclaim the good news. Jesus warned them and he said, You will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured until the end who will be saved. Matthew 10, 22. All right? right. You've got to count the cost. You're going to be hated by all. You are, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to be hated. And later, speaking on the last days, the topic that Paul is discussing with Timothy here, Jesus went on to say, Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Matthew 24 and 9. These are the consequences of being faithful, faithfully serving the Lord. It's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing to be called to serve the Lord. However, you had better be sober-minded about what that call entails. And I, I think that we have lost sight of that in the, in the quote-unquote church today. This is not like the majority of advertisements for most Bible colleges and seminars, you see, seminaries, you see. Because indeed, if you're going to choose to serve or answer God's call to serve Him that way, you had better be prepared to endure hardship. For more than 40 years, Alice and I have traveled throughout the USA, much of the rest of the Western world. I mean, we've been through the U all over the UK, Europe, Africa, Latin America. And all too often, I have seen the shepherds of the church. And I'm, yes, I'm putting that in quotes. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the woe to the shepherds that God mm -hmm. speaks to in the Old Testament. I've seen them living or striving to live the lives of the rich and famous. Right. The glitz and the glamour. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they're hardly able to say like Jesus, the king of kings, in response to a scribe who said that he would follow wherever Jesus led. And Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Matthew 8, 20. Are you going to follow Jesus? This is what he's, this is what he's warning about, right? It's hard to imagine many men who have followed the Lord as faithfully as the apostle Paul. And he said, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians, starting in verse 11. No, starting in chapter 11, verse 23. Paul said, are they servants of Christ? Talking about so many people out there claiming to be servants of Christ. I speak as if insane. I more so. In far more labors and far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys and dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers amongst false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Apart from such things, from external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. That's 2 Corinthians 11, down there, eleven twenty-eight. The daily pressure of concern for the churches. And remember, Paul is writing this letter to Timothy while he's in prison in Rome. Yes, yes. Okay, I mean, if you think it's glitz and glamour, and so many people going into ministry seem to think exactly that, that it's about respectability. You know, I can remember saying over 40 years ago that in the church, as I see it, we have all too often traded the power of God for respectability. Yes. That's so true. So he goes on and says to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Now, Paul had already told... Timothy, just a couple of verses earlier, to preach the word. So here he's being more specific. Evangelism is about the, the good news. It's not just going out and preaching, mm -hmm. okay? Because you just may be preaching what people want to hear, right? It's the word of the cross. It's preaching the word of the cross, the atoning death of Jesus that sets the captives free 
and brings eternal life. It's the power of God unto salvation. That's what Paul wrote to Romans, right? It's the word of the cross. That's evangelization. I mean, today in the church, it seems, this sounds like I'm being harsh. Well, maybe I am. Mm -hmm. Because maybe we need to take a hard, cold look at what's going on in the church. It's not about having coffee and donuts in the church and inviting people to come to a, a fun Sunday fellowship. It's about preaching the death of Jesus Christ. And it's about calling people to follow him. All right? Okay. The time is near. It, the time is very, very near. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. Remember, the context of this whole letter is Paul talking about the, the perilous last yes. days. Yes. Evangelism is about mankind being set free from the debt of their sins. Mm -hmm. Paul had instructed Timothy to rightly divide the word, bringing a balanced picture of the work of Jesus Christ. First, dealing with the sin by becoming sin followed by the free gift of God, righteousness. You know, we have a page up on our Bible Talk um, website called Good News, the Good News. And it starts by saying, first, the bad news. Because if there's no bad news, you don't need good news. The bad news is you're a sinner. A sinner. Now, I don't even know you. How do I know you're a sinner? Because all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It is only the work of the atoning work of Jesus Christ that makes us right, that washes the stain of sin away. You've been born into sin. You've been born in sin. The only thing that can take away that stain of sin it's is the, the blood. shed blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of the Lamb. So he now Paul goes on and he says to Timothy, fulfill your ministry. Mm. Fulfill. Make sure it's full. Make sure it's full. Make sure that your service to the Lord is full, not partial. There is no such thing as part-time ministry. Yeah. Now, in life, you may do other things, but if you're doing them as unto the Lord, as you're supposed to be, yeah. it's your still ministry. part of your ministry. Yeah. All right? Think about this verse that, that Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes. He said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Show where you're going, all right? It's whatever you put your hand to, do with all your might. As unto the Lord. Well, I can go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, or I can talk about what Jesus said, the foremost command. How you're supposed to do your ministry? With all your heart, right. with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. There's no such thing as a halfway ministry. He wants all. If you're a Christian, you have a ministry. You have to devote yourself to it. You have to fulfill the ministry that God has called you to. You're not here on this earth to have a better job, a bigger car, a nicer house. You are here to serve the Lord God Almighty. We are ambassadors for Christ. We have a ministry of, of reconciliation. You have a ministry of reconciliation if you are filled with the love of God, the power right. of God, and the Spirit of God. Now, I'm going to go on to verses uh, 6 and 7. Paul says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. The time of my departure has come. Paul was an expert in the word, in the law. So he would have known what, what it says in Ecclesiastes when Solomon wrote, there's an appointed time for everything. There's a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die. Time to plant and time to uproot what, what's planted. That's Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2. The only way to understand Paul's statement here is to put, in, put it in context with other things mm -hmm. that he has believed in his heart, confessed with his mouth, and had been living all through his ministry. Mm -hmm. You're not going to understand Paul unless you understand that. Because this is what he, he, he preached, but he lived what he preached. Yes. So in Romans, he said, you know, our faith is about believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth, but it's also about being a doer of the word, all right? Mm -hmm. Doing what you... so. He's not sitting in a cozy study no. writing these letters. 
So Paul wrote to the Philippians in, in chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. He said, according to my earnest expectations and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now, as always, be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So when he talks about his time, he's talking about the end of his life. Yes. Mm-hmm. You've got to understand what he said and how he said in 1 Corinthians 15, he said, but when this perishable will have put on the imperishable and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. This is what Paul has been preaching this for years. Mm-hmm. Yes. But like all things that he preached, it's coming time for him to live it. It's coming to pass. Right. And yet he says, in, what he, you know, don't you think, I, I can only say to you, I know the things that I've preached. Mm-hmm. They don't go away once I've preached them. They mm-hmm. become more real in my life. So he had said in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, we are of good courage, I say, and prefer, prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's what we should all want. This is why the prospect of being at, at you know, at this time of completion, it doesn't scare him. No. It's a reward. It's yes. a joy, right? I'm finally going to be with Remember, my he has, master. He started this letter to Timothy by writing, For this reason I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. 2 Timothy 1.12, that's how he started, right? Mm. Can we all say that we know that we, what we really believe and in whom we have believed? If so, at a time like this in the life of Paul, the words Jesus spoke to Lazarus, mm. to, to his sister Mary, Martha rather, they'll ring like a heavenly chorus. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And he said to her, do you believe this? John 11, 25 and 26. I promise you, Paul believed it. Yes. He said in the book of Acts, he said he believed everything that was written in Mm -hmm. God's word. Mm -hmm. Paul had indeed kept the faith. Praise God. So he goes on in verse 4, 8, chapter 4, verse 8. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The reward. Mm -hmm. There is a reward. We, you know, do we lose sight of the fact that we are just aliens and sojourners, strangers passing through this world of woe. And that we're going to a better place. We're going to that eternal life where there are no sorrows, there are no sufferings, there is no sickness. So he says to Timothy, make every effort to come to me soon. He desired companionship with with Timothy, why? Because Timothy was a faithful brother. Yes. I got to tell you, if you're faithful and if you are serious about Jesus, you will want to be around other people who are serious about Jesus. Yes. And to be around people who are not serious about Jesus, who are playing church. It's very painful. It is very painful. Mm. It really is. And, you know, here's an example. Because then he goes on to say, for Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Demas having loved this present world. Now, now Demas, he's mentioned when Paul writes his letter to, to Philemon and the church in his house, Demon, Demas is noted as a fellow worker. This guy was a fellow worker of Paul. And again, as he's writing to the Colossians, Paul remarks that Demas sends his greetings to the church. But it is not, it's not how you start. It's the end. 
It's how you finish. And the end of the matter. <laughs> it's how you finish. In, in his discourse on the, par on the last days, in Matthew 24, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, tell us, what are going to be the signs of your coming in the end of the age? Jesus says, the one, but the one who endures till the end, he will be saved. You've got to endure to the end. Amen. Right? You, you, can't, you can't talk about what you did last week. I mean, you got to keep it going. You you have to be faithful till the end, all right? You can't live on yesterday's manna, right? And that's exactly right. Faith is like manna. Mm -hmm. You need it fresh every, every day, day, like that manna. I mean, God supplied it every single day, but you couldn't go out and you couldn't store it up, right? You can't live on yesterday's faith. Mm -hmm. You have to hear from the Lord every today. Day. Every day. Because faith comes by hearing. Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, the, the letter to the Philippians, and he said, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards a goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. you got to press on. You have to endure. Okay? Amen. This is not, you know, it's not like, oh, I, I got baptized 37 years ago. No, what, what did you do yesterday? Doesn't and matter. You have to live this life. You have to live it faithfully from beginning to end. You have to press on. You have to persevere. You know, Paul had just said this to, to Timothy. He said, I finished the race. You can't. You can't race and quit, you know, 10 yards before the finish line and say, well, boy, I really did well. Yeah. You got to press on to the end. Crescens and Titus, by the way, who were mentioned in this verse, there's mm -hmm. no reason to assume that they were akin to Demas and had left. Mm -hmm. They just weren't there with right. him because they had He's gone on fulfilling, are, fulfilling right? their ministry. Mm -hmm. All right. But I'll tell you what, loving the world and the things of the world That's not good. will take you away from that right relationship with God. There is absolutely no doubt about that. That's right. Because if you love the world and the things of the world, you have not the love of the Father within you. That's what the Word says. I want to read here, just go on, right? Mm -hmm. Paul says, only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. You know that Luke... Let's just know in the book of Acts that Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas. had a falling out right. over Timothy. Over, over Luke. I mean, over Mark. Over Mark. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. Not that Mark. No, no, no. no. Because Mark had left the, the mission field at one point. This is, a, I mean, the, the indication that everything had been restored. Mm hmm because when you love the Lord, you're going to love others like the Lord. You know, you'll, you'll get it restored, okay? And reconciled. Particulus, yeah. I have sent to Ephesus. Paul is directing so much of the work of God mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's so important now that he is instructing Timothy, his son in the faith, because Timothy is going to carry on. That's Timothy is going to be pick that up overseer. Yeah. He, he is. I mean, you know, God's not dependent on people. People are dependent on God. But no, it's like Elijah and Elisha. Right. There's a ministry. The ministry is not about the person. It's about the need that that person is fulfilling. So if that person goes, that need is still there. And God will fill it. All right? And then I like this. He says, when you come, bring the cloak which I have left at Troas with Carpus, and the books, especially the parchments. This is down to earth. Now we're down at the end of the letter, and this is all just down to earth okay. stuff. Right. Okay. This is a. It's, I said this before, and it's important that you realize this is a personal letter to Timothy. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have personal relationships with one another. This is not cold, hard corporate work. All right. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Be on guard against him yourself, for he vigorously opposed our teaching. You know, one of the things we don't do in the church a lot is name names. They'll say, oh, you're being judgmental. Well, 
No, what makes you think you're this not supposed warnings. to be judgmental? This, th these are warnings. Go read 1 Corinthians 5, where it says we are. We're supposed to judge what's going on in church. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to judge outsiders. But somebody is supposed to deal with things that are going on yeah. in the church. We tend to do the opposite. Yes. Well, absolutely. Because it's easier to point the finger out there and not have to deal with it ourselves, mm -hmm. right? In verse 16, he says, but At my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May not be counted against them. All deserted, <clears throat> just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. I mean, you can't... The, the unfortunate truth is you can't count on people. No. You man, can't, man will fail you. Man, man will fail you. Yes. You can only count on God, who will never man leave you nor forsake never you. Never fail. But thank God that God is still at work in each one of us who has given ourselves over to him. Mm -hmm. So like with, like, some, like with Mark, mm -hmm. God can restore those situations when they are not what they should be, right? right? But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that through me the proclamation might be fully accomplished and all the Gentiles might hear. And I was rescued out of the lion's mouth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot we don't know about Paul's life. Yes, yes. And there's just these little things. He's not given to cliches. He's not given to exaggeration. He doesn't go into depth about any of his persecutions. No, but there's a couple of indications in the New Testament yeah. that, that Paul, some of the sufferings that Paul faced, that we don't even, he doesn't go into, no, right? No, he doesn't. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. God will rescue you. Hallelujah. No matter what situation you're in, That's right. God will rescue you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. No. Now, it may not look like the way you want it here on this planet. That's right. But our life is not about here on this planet. Our life is about eternity that awaits us and the reward that awaits us. Okay? Paul says, Greek, Prisca, and Kula in the household of Anasophorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, but Trophimus, I, I left sick at Miletus. He left sick? Yeah. You know, not everybody got healed every time That's right. in, in the New Testament. Even to Timothy. Timothy he had told wine. Timothy to take a little wine for his constant stomach ailments. Mm -hmm. All right? God is in control. You're not. That's right. And you can't make demands of God. No. Okay? You can only be in tune with the Holy Spirit and know what he wants when he wants it. Everything he does has a purpose. Everything he does has purpose. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Make every effort to come to me, to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, and Prudence and Linus and Claudia with all the brethren. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. Grace be with you. Thus ends the letter to Timothy. Paul loved Timothy. Yes, he did. I mean, that's evident in all of this, in all of his writing, right? He's, he talks about Paul, Timothy being a son to him. Mm -hmm. That's not an exaggeration. But remember, it's the personal teaching, but it's not only to Timothy. Because he instructed Timothy, what he's giving Timothy, it's Timothy so must now pass on. Right. What God has given you, what he's called you to, what he has filled you with, you must now pass on to the rest of the church. Mm -hmm. You must seek and see every opportunity that God gives you to bless other people with what he's given you. Because each one of us, he has given us a, an abundance of something. Right. And he's given us an abundance of something to meet the needs of others so that there wouldn't be any need. Mm -hmm. Like in the very early church, when they held all things in common, mm -hmm. nobody said anything that was their own, and they were truly being led by the Spirit of God. There was no need. No need among them. When was the last time you saw a church with no mm. need? Well, God. I pray that you take th these teachings from Timothy and they will remain up on our website until the Lord gets them taken down. May they be there until he returns. Oh, yeah. But I pray you go back and if you've missed some, go through and, and, yes. and watch them. And let others know about them, all right? Um, the purpose in doing this is to help people be equipped with the Word of God, all right? To stir them up again. So, Father, I just pray, Lord God, Lord, that the things that you've given us, that we have faithfully passed on, Lord God, 
And Lord, that there would be an encouragement and a blessing to those who hear them, Lord. And Lord, that we would all, here at this table and all that are participating, Lord, that we would fill our ministries, Lord, because you've given each one of us a call in our lives to serve you. Lord, we praise you and thank you, and I bless you that you can use us. In all of our weakness, you can use us and perfect your strength. In all of our foolishness, Lord God, you can use us to show forth your wisdom. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word made flesh who dwelt among us. I thank you for the gift of your son, Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, we'll be doing another Bible study series here soon. God hasn't told me what it's going to be yet. But I'll let you know when you show up. <laughs> so pray for us until then, and we'll pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, write to us at prayer at BibleTalk.com. We'd, we'd love to be a part of your life and have you be a part of ours. So until then, may the Lord bless you. And may you faithfully serve him in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.